Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, we're going to have to go down this rabbit hole one more time. And uh, there's going to be some new information I'm going to be sharing with you on this. Uh, and this is where Intel reports that I was involved in uh, this earlier this week here are definitely it's information of biblical prophecy being fulfilled on an unprecedented scale and I can't even begin to tell you how serious this is it is clearly marking the times that we're living in as the end of days and I want to really go through this with you step by step we're going to be looking at the book of Matthew chapter 24 specifically some of the words that Jesus said there I know we've been on that route already this very important information though you really need to look at uh, because we can break it down and really show you everything step by step in there. We're going to be looking at the Gospel of John. Uh, another interesting uh, aspect there coming out of the Gospel of John that I want to share with you uh, in chapter 5. Now that's going to deal with more so looking at a prophecy that Jesus said in Matthew 24 about the false prophets and specifically what Jesus says that's going to happen at the end of days that I think that you really need to be aware of because it shows you the doctrine that comes out, right? We're going to be looking at Revelation chapter 20. We're going to be talking about how that Satan is loosed from that prison, the battle of Gog and Magog, how that's going to affect us here uh, in the now, in the here and now. And really who that Gog and Magog, those foot soldiers may be. We may actually know who they are now. So there's a lot of things that we could speculate on. Uh, but I want to really share those things with you. We're going to look at the, the Gospel of Luke uh, as well. And in the Gospel of Luke, where Jesus talks about those fearful sights coming upon the earth, it has a lot to do with the dimensions as they begin to come down, as they begin to thin and weaken and stuff. This is why you're going to see those fearful sights coming upon the earth, because you're seeing across the dimension. You're seeing, you're, you're going to actually begin to see these crazy things happening here on the earth maybe even prehistoric animals we're seeing all kinds of things reports are coming in from everywhere around the nation and around the world of things that people are seeing that are just hideous and horrendous so i don't know what all that means how that's going to work out i'm going to be sharing with you too from the egyptian writings i i when i, I want to clarify though i don't normally post egyptian writings when i talk about them uh, mainly because I don't want people getting into doctrinal, uh, you know, I don't want people to feel like that I'm saying that this is a, a biblical source. But when I see the prophecies that are written in some documents, and that could be the Dead Sea Scrolls, it doesn't matter where it's at. If it matches a prophecy that I have in the Bible, I like to show you as a confirmation of that prophecy. But I don't want to have people misconstruing it thinking that oh this is a biblical passage no I don't say that but there's certainly some clear indications of the exact same prophecies so we're going to look at these things here so I want to get right into this with you here it's the second time I've had to record this message because I forgot my microphone again uh, but let's get right into it and that's why I got the screenshot up there and I'm going to show show you real quick though besides this dimension there and the report that I got, and I'll just back up on that report with you real quick. As it was said to me in the report, um, for one, I was being told that there were, you know, as you already guys already know, we've got, uh, and I don't think they've made this public, uh, not NASA hasn't, but we have an asteroid passing on the, around the 20th. In about four days, we've got an asteroid that's going to be passing Earth, uh, not dangerously close or nothing like that. It does have a debris field. There is anticipation that that debris field is going to hit the earth. Parts of it will. So we should get some kind of fire show of meteorites and stuff like that hitting the earth. Uh, but as a result, they're going to tell you that a plague, and I'm going to use that word, a plague, was on that meteorite. And this is what's, caused the, was what's going to be a cause of a new global plague on the earth. Just what Jesus spoke about in Matthew 24. When he talked about pestilence, the word pestilence there in the Greek is not bugs, it's plagues. It's exactly what you've been seeing now for the last couple of years 
uh, that man has manu manufactured. Only this time around now, it's extraterrestrial manufactured. But they're going to tell you it comes from one of these meteorites that hits the Earth. They've been prepping you for that already, haven't they? There are channels that are prepping you for that, right? Well, then you know when you're being deceived to believe a lie, right? As Jesus says, they will give you the lie. Well, we'll go into that in a moment. The veil between dimensions is collapsing, as I was told. Certain attributes from other dimensions are already affecting us in our own construct is failing and there is there is also a magnetic interference and some things is planet x or planet nine whatever you want to call it nibiru but in reality it's not it's all as a result of the collapsing of our own of the dimension that separates the different universes or the different heavens we might say this bringing everything to an end and this is truly a biblical fact a biblical prophecy there are different attributes appearing on our plane of existence as well. Spirits see us, and we might see them only as a blur. For them to see clearly, or for us to see them clearly, they have to materialize in our world. But they are afraid to do this because there are rules that have to be followed that have been set up, set up by these fallen angels. But another reason why they're starting to appear, and even strange creatures are starting to appear, is because of the dimensions, the veil between dimensions, as that's the way it was put to me, the veil between dimensions is collapsing. And as a result, there's going to be more and more of those strange sights that are going to be seen. Now I just bring that up, I get that started here, and as I said to you in the Egyptian writings, speaking about the collapsing there, right? Uh, Early on, they speak about in this Egyptian document how the kings will be intoxicated with a fiery sword and they will wage war against one another so that the earth is intoxicated with bloodshed. Sound familiar? Jesus said there'll be wars and rumors of wars and nations shall rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Remember that? Yeah, we'll get into that in a moment. But you jump down a little further into this one here and it says here, and their, their heavens will fall one upon the next. And their forces will be consumed by fire. Their eternal realms, too, will be overturned. And the heaven will fall and break, into, and break in two. Imagine that. Their heavens just falling, collapsing down. Now, as we look into the scripture, we see in the book of Matthew, for example, here, there you go, starting off here. You shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All right, so we have, right now we got the new war started with Russia with Ukraine. We've got a threat of war right now with China and Taiwan. We've got the threat of war with Israel and Iran. We have a threat of war of Iran, uh, Iran and that of Saudi Arabia. We have a threat of war with the United States, China, and Russia. And we have a threat of war with the European Union and Russia. Everywhere there's a threat of war. So you have rumors of wars. You have wars. And eventually it's going to become a bloodshed, as the Egyptian document says, because nation will rise up against nation, kingdom will rise up against kingdom. The scripture also says in that one that I just read to you that you would have famine everywhere on the earth. Look at the articles there. Six billion needed to help 41 million people on the verge of famine. U.S. Democrats call for release of funds to stop Afghan famine. U.S. faces criticism over Somalia's famine. And then what about all the burning of the uh, food distribution centers in the United States creating an artificial famine, and as I was told in one of the briefings I was in, it will create a civil unrest which will prime this nation for more civil unrest and more reason for disarmament of the nation, which is to fulfill the, uh, the, the desire of the extraterrestrials is to disarm this nation. You have the pestilence, as it says. Literally, the Greek word is plagues. 
You already know of this one right here, right? That's been going on now, right? The next one, like I said, they'll be blamed on a meteorite striking the earth and the plague that'll be on that there. But it's not going to be the case. It is something that is being worked with right now with intelligence agencies and extraterrestrials. And according to one German scientist that I interviewed that you guys already know about, he was saying that there was an ET one released in the Netherlands and that the German government is tracking it. But they're going to blame it on a meteorite hitting the earth. And they've been priming you with people with intel to tell you of the great dangers of the meteorites that they carry those things on them, them nasty little bugs, right? Well, now you know what's going to really happen. Earthquakes in diverse places. Yes, everywhere going on. All over the globe. Earthquakes. Right there, all the way out in the middle of the United States. Um, don't know exactly where that one is. There, oh, Illinois. <laughs> That's interesting. You know, there was the one that I seen in that uh, dream I had years ago about the New Madrid. I knew nothing about a New Madrid. It was in Illinois, I think, is where the earthquake, where the epicenter was. And now they got a 2.5. What do you know? That's interesting. I didn't even know that. 4.5 over in Nevada. Out here at Japan. Uh, all different places there. 5.0 versions and stuff. 5.0 in Kamatsushimiko, Japan. Just everywhere you look, there's earthquakes. And we get bigger ones, smaller ones, whatever the case may be. And USGS is not even reporting half of what's really going on. All right. Let's go back to Matthew 24, though. Now, they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Who's going to deliver you up to kill you? And why would they deliver you up and have you killed? Then many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Wow. Why would they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake? Well, you know, if you want to go to our, our channel, IsraeliNewsLive.org, right? And you go right here to this very interesting article. Beware of anti-Gentile hate speech. And this article will get in later into the article written by my wife there. It will get into the Noahide laws. And uh, the United Nations has also recognized the Noahide laws as the law of peace and justice. And certain J groups are asking for criminal world court that will be based on the Noahide covenant. She's going to cite the sources in here. And, of course, the beheading of those Gentiles that do not keep or go against any of these seven Noahide laws, it requires the beheading of those people. There's also happens to be a J doctor amongst the truth movement, and he's very good about exposing the lies about that thing they put in people. But I tell you one thing he doesn't shy away from. He doesn't shy away from those those laws right there and he's all about making sure that you get beheaded if you break them talk about divisions there's going to be a divisions and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another why are they offended they're offended because if you say anything against that little country out there in the middle east you know the one just south of lebanon let me show you a picture of that just so you kind of get what i'm talking about because see a lot of people a lot of people feel like that this country right here is God's fulfillment of prophecy in this day. This one right here. They feel like that this is God's fulfillment of prophecy. That the Jewish people are back in their homeland. I believe all 12 tribes, as it is said in the book of Acts chapter 2, I think it's verse 36, Hear, O house of Israel, be it known unto you the same Jesus whom you have crucified is made, made both Lord and Christ. Peter clearly tells you all 12 tribes are there. Now you can argue it with him. He was there. He should know. 
But anyway, there's that big move about that little country over there, and this is what's going to cause all those divisions. Because the iniquity shall abound, and the love of many shall wax cold, but he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So the truth of the gospel would be preached. Not that false one. Not the false one that the false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Now, we've already got those false prophets out there. And there's many of them. I'll just give you some visuals to look at, right? And especially the guy that's portrayed in this video here. And trying to put you up underneath Talmudic rabbis, which clearly Jesus says the Pharisees were a bunch of serpents and vipers, generation of serpents, in fact. And you can't be an Orthodox rabbi unless you can prove your lineage to the Pharisees. That's according to Hemia Gordon. That's according to Tovia Singer. And both of them should know, right? They both should know. So you have false prophets, and there's many of them. And these guys are doing what? They're leading you back up underneath the Talmudic laws of Judaism. And that's why we're going to get into the book of John in just a little bit here too. That's why I wanted you to know about the book of John, the gospel of John, right? Let me just quickly show that with, share that with you. Um, oh, goodness, I actually don't have it up there now. I took it down. I'll, let me, I'll tell you what. Before we get into that, let me bring up... Uh, Real quick, though, what I was going to show you here in the book of Luke. This is going back to the same thing that I said about the intel part earlier. There shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea waves roaring. Hmm. Men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking for those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Why will you see those things coming upon the earth, the fearful sights? Because the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. What were they telling me in the intel meeting there? The veil between dimensions is collapsing. Certain attributes from other dimensions affecting us in our construct. In our construct. And he goes on to explain how the, the different attributes appearing on our plane of existence. And that people are starting to see creatures and things. And then he said to me, he said, like it says in the book of Luke, men's hearts failing them for fear and looking for those things which are coming on the earth. And I don't even know if the friend of mine knew that what he was saying to me, because it says, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken, that it was in direct relation to that part of the scripture as well. And of course the Egyptian document where it says that the heavens, let's see, uh, and, and the heavens will fall one upon the, the next and their forces will be consumed by fire and their eternal realms too will be overturned and his heaven will fall and break in two. A complete destruction is what's coming. And then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. See, this is when you see Christ coming. When the dimensions are being torn apart. Right? And just like in Matthew, Jesus says, um, where was it? If in, verse 23, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, if he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there are the eagles gathered together. Literally in the Hebrew, Matthew says, there are the buzzards gathered together. In other words, see, people take that as a positive scripture. It's not. In other words, if you've got a body... Or as oftentimes in some of the Egyptian writings it says, 
They, they will worship a dead man as the Messiah. So wherever the carcass is, the buzzards will be gathered. You can count on that. I think I have that. Let's see. Maybe I even have it up here. Let's see. Um, I think I do, but let me find out what the verse was again. 28. Yes. Wherever the body is, there will be gathered the vultures. So as long as they're looking for a body, that's where the vultures are. Again, Jesus said to his disciples, As the lightning comes from the east and is seen in the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man. So, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the body is, there will get, be ga gathered the vultures. So when you're just looking for the body, when they say, Always oh, in the east, always oh, in the desert, always oh, over here, always oh, over there. That's where the vultures are. That's where the vultures are. You know what I mean? The vultures. They're certainly there. Right? And you have Revelation. When the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, shall go out to deceive the nations, deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is the sand of the sea. That's your fallen angels. That's your Nephilim. But also their, their numbers is the sand of the sea. Imagine when you begin to take all those ministries and you begin in all those ministries, you begin to pile together these people and their ministries and their followers. You begin to take, say, the Vatican and their followers or the Lutherans and their followers. With all these false doctrines, you got a battle. You don't have just a battle. Notice, notice what that battle is about. They shall go out to deceive the nations, which are the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Whoa, wait a minute. Are you, are you serious? That's a spiritual battle. That's not a battle of flesh and blood. Paul said, you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, archons, devils, demons. They went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and, and the beloved city, and the fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. But they're going to have a time where they're going to do a lot of deception. You've got a Gog and Magog battle going on right now, and we didn't even know it. And that thousand years is in the plural. Thousands, plural. We've been ruling and reigning with Christ for the last 2,000 years. That's the true reign with Christ. Paul said you reign with Christ now in heavenly places. Satan was imprisoned when Christ imprisoned him 2,000 years ago when he wounded him. But he's loose now. Remember that Egyptian, or not Egyptian, remember that uh, Mayan document, the classified version that I shared with you, that according to that document there, 2012 was not the end of the world. 2012 was, going to, was the estimated date for when these demons were going to be loosed. These, these reptilian demons, devils, by the way, as you know, Pharisees, they're reptilian as well, correct? Well, guess who their father is? Jesus says, your father is the devil. Right? The devil is called in the Bible, according to the Bible, that that old serpent, a reptilian, right? In the Garden of Eden, it was a reptilian that deceived Adam and Eve, right? Well, wow, golly gee, now we're starting to get somewhere. Thank God we're getting somewhere, right? Let's move on down. For whosoever the carcass is, the vultures we know will be gathered, right? Immediately after the tribulation of those days, so that shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall be not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Then he shall send the angels with the great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the end of the heaven to the other. That's when he comes to, to liberate the true believers. 
Heaven and earth, verse 35, shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels, but my Father only. Now notice, even though he shows you heaven and earth is going to pass away, in other words, it's going to collapse down, as it's been told to me, and we are already at that time frame that this is what's happening, and it may take quite a few years yet to go, but we're moving into all, all these things are happening at one time. But even with that happening, what did Jesus say? But as of the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In other words, when he comes, this is what he's going to find. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew it not until the flood came and took them all away. What were they eating? What were they drinking? Human blood and human flesh. Who were they marrying? Oh, it was fallen angels having sexual relations with women of the earth, producing children, and that is happening yet today. And we've been getting reports now since the 90s of blood sacrifices being done by this bear-like man creature, a Nephilim, with the pentagrams and everything in national parks across the United States, and now even being seen in different places in, in the eastern parts of the United States, in the Smoky Mountains, etc., very demonic things. These dimensions are breaking down. The things biblical prophecy is being fulfilled right before our eyes. And we're not even noticing it. Now, as I get ready to close, let me share one other thing with you as well. I told you about the scripture of John. Jesus says, And you have not his word abiding in you, for whom he has sent him you believe not. Talking to the Pharisees. Watch what he says though. Verse 39, So in Incredibly important. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. Oh, wow. Do you see that the way I see that? You've got to remember, there was no New Testament when Jesus said this. It was only the Old Testament. So he tells them, search the scriptures, for in them, you think you have eternal life. In other words, they believe if they keep the law, they have eternal life. And there they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. Wow. In other words, there was no life in them. They did not get eternal life from the law or keeping of the law. So in that case, what Paul says... Over here in 2 Corinthians 3, 6, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but the, of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. The law requires death. Who is able to keep it? No wonder why in the book of Hebrews it goes so deep and to the gospel of Jesus Christ brought a law of love that would help you not be bound by the law that Moses gave. Wherein, as Jesus just said, for in them you think you have eternal life. What? The scriptures. You think because you keep the law you have eternal life. You don't. But they do testify about Jesus coming. And he says, and, I, and you will not come to me that you might have life. So the law testified that Christ would come and he would be the only way, but the people will not go in that direction. What a shame. You ever want to do anything for the Jewish people, get them Jesus Christ. It's the only hope that they will ever have. Listen, we are living in a biblical time of an unparalleled proportions unparalleled in the history of man is what we're living in now I can't stress enough to you that we are now in a biblical fulfillment unparalleled of any we are seeing as it says in the scripture pestilence not pestilence plagues literally the word is plagues okay plagues and I already showed you the ones that are out and what's coming. Earthquakes, famines, all this is happening. 
and as well as it says right there in the notes sitting right there on my desk um, the veil between dimensions is collapsing heavens and earth shall pass away that's also to happen the mingling of the seed is happening the Going back to like it was in the days of Noah is happening. They're going to hate you and afflict you and deliver you up. Noah hide laws. It's, it's about to happen. So where are we at, friends? Where are we at? Listen, if God lays it upon your heart to support the work we're doing, we certainly need your help. We're getting ready to do some, I have to say, secret mission trips that will need your help on as well. I just cannot disclose the information about where we're going or why. But if you want to help us, above our above this video right now is our website, israelinewslive.org, our mailing address, Stephen Benoon at P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. Your love and help is greatly appreciated. I know it's a very difficult time for everyone right now. So if God lays it upon your heart, we thank you for that. Uh, if you're struggling, which I many, know many people are, we, we understand that. We know what it's like. We see it ourselves. We're dealing with it just like you are. Um, if you want to get an EMP shield for the protection because of these things that are coming, I don't know which ones are going to affect us in which ways. I have no idea. But just remember, if you use that coupon code of INL50, they will take an additional $50 off. As you can see right here, they'll take that off if you get that to protect your vehicle, your grandkids, your children, if they don't have the money for one and you're wanting to help them to do that for their car or, or their home, whatever the case may be. For every time you purchase one, you get that $50 off automatically. It's not just a one-time deduction, it's off any and as many as you order. If you order 20 of them, you'd get 20 of them with $50 off. Not saying that anybody would do that, but just so you're aware of that. Uh, but we thank you and thank you for your support of this ministry. I will put these in the description below. And let's hope they don't mess with this video. I may take it down after a day or two on YouTube because I have to be careful about what's there. Nonetheless, it will be on brand new tube and I connect FX uh, as well. Just so you're aware of that. God bless you. Uh, let me just make sure I didn't. Oh, I don't know if I shared that with you guys or not when we first started. But uh, besides the fact that I was getting this through Intel, the University of Southern Denmark also talking about the collapsing of the universe is closer than ever before. They do mention it could happen tomorrow or maybe in a billion years. But they are definitely seeing the signs. So when you got uh, universities talking about these things, that's pretty serious stuff there. Oh, I did want to play this one little clip here for you as well. And I forget exactly what was here, but let's play this one little clip real quick before we close here. And then I can cl uh, comment on it at that point there. The most obvious answer involves gravity. What goes up must come down. Stars and galaxies and everything else might reverse direction. The universe would collapse in what some scientists call a big crunch. Okay, I don't know how well you heard that, but they said that the stars and stuff would reverse direction. Um, and I forget if this is written in the Bible or if it was written in the Egyptian document, but it literally talks about the stars uh, getting out of their course. Um, and that may be, let's see here. Um, oh, goodness here. Okay, yeah, the sun will be dark, the moon will cause the light to cease, and the stars of the sky will cancel their circuits. That is in the Egyptian document. So like they said, they would reverse direction when it cancels their course. In other words, they have a specific movement that they always make. That course would change, and that is in the Egyptian writings there. And then they talk about the collapse, just like the Egyptian writing writes as well. So I'm glad we did bring that out. Um, so let's see here, just to make sure we got, we got all that. Um, <laughs> yeah, we won't go into the false prophets right now. You already know about that there. 
All right. So we got everything covered. I think we do. God bless you. Thank you again for listening. I'm Stephen Benin with Israeli News Live, and good evening.